Alice, it's you. 1865, that was the first book, Alice in Wonderland, and there was nothing like it ever before. I mean, in terms of words and characters. Find out! Alice! The Alice? The idea was to explore the nature of, of dreams. There's a collection of outsiders, and particularly Alice. The opportunity to see the marriage of Tim Burton and Alice in Wonderland is a, a real treat. There's a lot of pressure in a way when you're playing such an iconic character. The hard thing is stripping away all the baggage that comes with her being Alice in Wonderland and just finding Alice. Come back to me and just sort of hold your look back to that. Okay. Yeah. One of the reasons why Alice and Tim are such a great match is because nothing is exactly as it seems in Wonderland. Nothing is entirely good or entirely bad. He's always had a compassion, I guess, and been drawn to outsiders. I think it's quite tricky for Tim because he said they're all mad. So you have, we all have to make them mad in a different way. It falls somewhere in between an adaptation and a retelling, but it incorporates a lot of the original characters and themes of the storybooks. A lot of the book is Alice trying to figure out who she isn't by process of elimination. In the Tim Burton Alice in Wonderland, Alice is trying to name who she is. The idea of Wonderland is kind of in a surreal way, representative of some way, shape, or form issues that she's dealing with in her own life. I think I'm going mad. I keep seeing a rabbit in a waistcoat. The beginning of the film is so important for establishing Alice's character. You know, it really has to set up a lot in such a short space of time of who she is before she goes to Wonderland. She's very close with her dad who unfortunately dies, but you don't, obviously you don't get to see all that bit. Her grief really unlocks her awkwardness and her uncomfortableness with the society that she lives in. You're not the same as you were before. There's a great line in it where the Mad Hatter says, you seem like Alice, but you've lost your muchness. My muchness? Well, I think in the storybooks, Alice does have a lot of muchness. She's, you know, she won't be told anything that, you know, that doesn't sit well with her. And this story is her, re you know, finding her muchness again. When it comes to accessing what her character would be like, I can draw a lot from what I'm experiencing. As a teenager, society expects me to be an adult in certain ways that I'm uncomfortable with. She's on that, the cusp of being between a child and a woman. In one minute, she looks so much like a child. And then the next, she's that was definitely a woman. So that was so important to Tim, to find someone who was on that cusp. She captured the spirit of what we try to do with Alice, you know, as a character, sort of internal, quiet strength, emotionally tough, but beautiful. For me, she really captured the voice of what Alice is and what that character is. Me is not an obvious Alice at all, but at the same time, she's the only choice, really. She's just perfect for it. Use the curtains if you must, but close this enormous girl. I thought I would have, like, one costume, maybe, but it kind of turned out to be, I think, six or something like that. I start off in like the kind of the classic blue dress for the party. We played around with other colors, but we came back to blue because it just seemed the right thing, and it also looked really pretty on Mia. You ruined the surprise. Because she's not a child, we just sort of did the teen version of Alice. It's only a dream. When I shrink for the first time in the round room, I end up wearing an undergarment, which I tie around my waist and so that it fits me somewhat. At the tea party, when I shrink again, the Hatter makes me a dress. It's out of a bit of her original under thing. So we had to really think out how all that worked together and make different scales of, of fabric and stuff to make it work with the, you know, shrinking and growing of Alice. But once it started working, then we sort of just did it and we had a lot more creativity with it. I, I would have regretted not seeing you again, especially now that you're you and the proper size. And it's a good size. It's a great size. It's a right proper size. size. It's so frustrating being a different size in the film. It is really frustrating having to be, you know, eight feet tall and then six inches. You know, I have to be on platforms. A lot of the time I have to have different eye lines, so there's a lot of acting to sticky tape and to tennis balls. I've been growing an awful lot lately. Well, if you've got Alice when she's, for example, eight foot six tall, with her eye line there is at seven feet 11, and she's talking to the Hatter, they've got to be looking in the correct attitude. Have I gone mad? The fun part of being different sizes is being able to film in a teapot or 
or film on a set where there's a giant table and, you know, a key that's this big that you can hold like, you know, a weapon or something. Why don't you slay the Jabberwocky yourself? It's been so much more physical than I ever imagined. Yeah, oh. You know, and Tim really likes that energy. Yeah. Yeah. Apart from fighting a dragon-esque creature, the big deal for her is regaining her strength. When Alice embraces her strength, the queen is able to reclaim her throne. They both kind of reclaim their power and are changed by Alice's courage. We have our champion. Her experience in Wonderland is her finding herself again and finding that she, you know, has the strength to be even more self-assured. Oh, I love it. I love the main message of this and that it's an emotional journey for Alice. 